Hello and welcome to this first video for a while for Illumino IT. So this marks our comeback as we start uh, looking to share a lot more videos in terms of uh, some IT training. And today we're going to look specifically at the magic of tables within Excel. If you have five minutes to spare, have a look at this video and you'll be analyzing your data in a much more efficient way than you have been so far. Without further ado, let's dive in to the demo. I've got a small data set. This is a topic that's very close to my heart. I've traveled a lot in South America. So you'll see here that I have a data set on the populations of different countries in South America. Here on the left, I have the country. We have a, co a column for population. We have a column showing which year that population was measured. Uh, we have the main language and how the country is divided. So is it provinces, departments, regions, etc. Now, we're going to start by inserting a table on top of this data because that's where we want to try and get to. We want to use tables in order to analyze some of this data. If we click anywhere within the data, the easiest way to get a table on top of all this is to select your data first. I'm going to click anywhere inside this data set, and then I'm going to um, type in Control and A. So that's a good shortcut, which selects all of that data for you. Now I'm going to go up here to the top. I'm going to click on Insert and insert a table on top of this data. This is going to tell me where my data is going to be and where the table is going to be set. So here it's row 1, column 1, to so row 15, column 5. That's correct. It shows us where that data is going. My table has headers. So I'm going to click on OK here. And you can see that the table has been inserted on top of that data. Sometimes Excel tries to give you some uh, nice help as well. I'm going to say not now because this is not part of our um, demo here. So what we can see here now is that we have an additional option on the headers. And that is this arrow that points downwards. And let's see what we get when we click on one of these arrows. Oh, OK, so I can already see it's going to allow me to sort on some data. And it's also going to allow me to potentially filter some data as well. So sort and filter are things that tables will give us straight away. And it will make it much easier for us uh, to do those two things with this data. Right, the first thing I want to do is look at this by country and by alphabetical order. So let's click on this and let's go sort A to Z. And immediately, you can see that it sorted this for me, A to Z, Argentina at the top, Venezuela at the bottom. And the interesting thing to note here is that we don't have to worry about the data coming with the first column. So we'll check the populations. Do these make sense? So Argentina, 45 million, Brazil, 216. You can see that the data has all moved together because this is all in a table. The rows are together and it will move everything in one for you. If you do a sort using uh, just the usual Excel sort, you need to ensure that you select all of that data together. Otherwise, you end up with um, data in rows, which is out of sync. So having this in a table makes all of that much easier for you. So that was the first thing. OK, now I want to measure this by population. So I want to say. Let's look at the smallest population first and the largest population last. So let's go in here, click on here. Ooh, and we can see something maybe slightly odd here. So it's asking us to sort by A to Z. So shall we see what happens when we sort this from A to Z? Ooh, OK. Uh, so 1, 2, 1, 8, 1, 9. Then starts with a 2, starts with a 2, starts with a 3. So if you're thinking about the way these are written down, it's actually doing it properly. So it's doing it from A to Z, but it's doing it in a number format. However, it's probably not what we wanted, because what this is not doing is it's not giving us the smallest to the largest. And the reason for that is because currently these are stored as text rather than as numbers. And you'll see that we actually have a uh, help from Excel here. And this is actually coming up and telling us the number in this cell is formatted as text. So this is the reason why this is not working properly. 
And this is actually a good place to just tell you about uh, kind of something in Excel, which is very important, which is data needs to be stored in the correct format if you want to be able to sort it efficiently and you want to be sure that you're getting the right answer when you're sorting, when you're um, doing these kind of operations uh, within Excel. So what we're going to do here is Excel is being very helpful and it's telling us what the problem is. So we're going to just select all of these and we're going to go convert this to a number. Okay, so you'll see now that these have moved to the right hand side. They're actually stored now as numbers. Um, however, we've still got this in the A to Z format. So what we're going to do now is click on that again. Now you can see that this has changed to sort smallest to largest, sort largest to smallest. Let's give this a go, sort smallest to largest. And there we go. So now I've got the smallest first, the largest last, and it's actually making sense in terms of those numbers. Again, just as a sanity check, we've got Brazil, 216 million, Argentina, 45 million, and the Falkland Islands right at the bottom there with 3,791. So that shows us that that is now working as we would expect. <clears throat> so something just to check there is how is that data stored? Is it stored properly as a number? Um, or if it's text, then you may need to convert that into a number. Okay, let's move on to filtering. So we've already done quite a bit of sorting. We've shown how that works. Now, I want to just choose all of the countries that speak Spanish as a main language. Let's click on our down arrow here on this header. So down at the bottom here, we can see select all, or we can just select specific ones. So let's click on Spanish. We could choose any of the other ones there. And there we go, straight away, it's giving me only those uh, countries where their main language is Spanish. Last thing I'm gonna show you here is that in terms of the filtering, we can also um, combine different filters. So for example, I already have my Spanish filter here. If I want to just see which Spanish speaking countries are divided into departments, let's click on here. So let's again, uh, remove all of the other ones click on departments, okay. And there you go, that shows me how I can uh, combine those filters in order to just bring the very specific data that I wanna see uh, back. So very quickly, that was uh, tables and inserting tables in order to very quickly have powerful filtering and sorting functions. Remember, we looked at the need to make sure that data is in the right format for it to do what we're expecting. But yeah, tables are a very powerful tool. We've only looked at scratch the surface with them there, but you will find that there's a lot more you can do with tables, which makes your life a lot easier when you're analyzing that data. Give us a like if this was useful for you. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you again soon with more tips. Goodbye.